What's up guys, SW here. Welcome back to the spot. Hopefully we can cure some boredom today because you know that boredom bug getting strong here in that Corona. But um, so I got a guy, a neighbor, he a new neighbor actually. He just bought a house down the street. He sees my extravagant collection of nonsense because I'm always doing crap. But um, he asked me, he like, hey man, um, I got a mower, it ain't running right. I found it on the side of the road. Uh, I could get it started, but it don't stay running. So in my mind, first thing I go to is fuel blockage or bad car or you know, dirty car, you know. Bad car, I won't know until I break it down, clean it, yada, yada. Y'all seen a couple of my videos. But um, so enough jaw jacking, I'm about to get to it. All right, here's the mower. Briggs and Stratton, six horsepower. It's always Briggs and Stratton. <laughs> Even though it says Murray, it's Briggs and Stratton. But um, here it is. Everything looks good. Let me check oil. Oil's dirty, but spot on. All he wants is it to run. So we're not tuning anything, tweaking on anything. Has gas. Yep, that's good gas, actually. So whoever tossed it out it hasn't been too long because the gas tastes rich and yucky but let me get you on the tripod and we get set up all right let's see what it's doing got a choke we're gonna put it on rabbit that primer's good all right let's crank it up see what happens starts without you priming it keep that engine because that's a good engine you know these newer models they tend to need the primer let me see if I can crank it again So it's starting definitely a carburetor issue. But again, when you get a motor, a motor and it starts without needing you to prime it, it is a good motor. The primer just basically a cold start, you know. It's uh, like 50 degrees right now and it's cranking up pretty decent. He said he just found it today and brought it over. So um, enough jaw jacking. Let me get you set up and we about to get it. Open her up, see what we're working with. I love a mower that has a throttle control. Sometimes you get on those properties where you need a little pump. Oh man, he needs a new filter. That's crappy. All right, let me list that. One, two, three, it has four. Does that four? This one has three bolts. All right. Let's get that. Let's hey, check the prime. Oh, yeah, it definitely primes beautifully. For this particular motor, it's only three bolts. Sometimes you get three. Most of the time, it's four. Personally, I only leave two when it's my mower. Comes up. Oh yeah, that is just gross. Needs to get clean. Even the carbs pretty yucky. Let's see. Big chunk all around. A okay. little bit bigger. Alright, I think I found it. 
Son of a bitch, I knew it was a fucking 10 mil. It's always that 10 mil. Anybody who works on a fucking mower know that illustrious 10 mil always is what you need. And you never can fucking find it because it gets the most use. So let me look in my toolbox for this damn thing. Okay, I got my 10 mil. Now I have to loosen the fuel. Or excuse me, I need to pull the fuel line out. And it's really in a funky freaking spot, man. Easiest way is to take the top off and I can get it coming down. But here at the sweet spot, we think we could fix anything. <laughs> so we gonna make it happen without doing that. Let me grab another tool. Let's see if my needle nose will assist your boy. Come on, baby. Yeah. Come on. Come on for that. Oh, got it. Shoot. All right. That ain't big enough. We need to stuff that. I'm actually not prepared today. He kind of just ran up on me. All right. Would that help? Yep. Okay. Yahtzee. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's get the most used uh, socket up for lawnmowers, that 10 mil. And we're only removing the two bolts holding the carb on. There we go. Okay, when you remove your carb, Make sure you don't be like a lot of guys who get all snatchy and stuff. You'll mess up your throttle assembly. This helps with your choke and the actual idle goes in and out depending on the load that the blade gets. Bam, it was that easy. Okay, here's the carb. It's disgusting. <laughs> I'm gonna clean it off a little bit and clean the back of the air box off. Um, his air filter, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm just going to, you know, slap it around a little bit. I actually sold my air compressor because normally I would just use the air compressor, blow out in the grooves. But I got tired of having an air compressor because it didn't get much use. So let me get it. Okay, I was going to go to my table and clean this. But, um, well, currently in some nonsense. That's the bike I'm using for my next motorbike build. Um, this is my personal weed eater I prefer to use. It's a Craftsman. Um, the carburetor is bad. And I swapped out some carbs. Here's another extra carb. And there's another one laying around somewhere. It didn't work. So I ended up deciding on just buying a brand new carb. It's winter time and you actually get deals. But here's my table. <laughs> Got crap for days. I'm always wrenching on something. So I'm basically just going to do it right here. Ah, there we go. First things first, it's easier to clean a car. With, oh, I'm scarce on my car cleaner. So I'm not going to be wasteful. I'm going to grab my brush and scrub it. This is my steel brush wire. I'm not going to clean it perfectly because honestly, none of this even matters. It's more of a cosmetic. Use my steel brush, scrub it. Bam. All right. Now we got to remove this drain bolt right there. All right. Pop this bowl off, this bowl nut that's not uh, coming off easily. There we go. This ratchet is actually broken. That's why I'm not rat doing the ratchet motion. But I work stuff until it dies. And as long as it can hold a socket and turn a bolt, it's not dead. Bam, let's crack it open, see what we're working with in here. Oh, that one's tight. 
I don't think this has ever been opened. Alright. Gotcha. Let's see what's stuck right there. So, it's always good to go slow and be careful. Oh man, look at that. That's what's in this thing. Let's see if I can get you some contrast. Get all those floaties in there. All the grit at the bottom. Floaties on my hand. So yeah, it's definitely a dirty card. One way you get crap in your carburetor like this is having a dirty filter. The build up will happen and you'll get crap that sucks in and then you, some people don't be cautious of their gas in the sense of they'll leave their containers exposed and everything like that. But um, you move your retaining pin, the butterfly valve comes right out. Make sure I don't lose all my pieces. You have your butterfly flap and your seat pin. Not sure if these are the right terms. This is just what I call them. Make sure you don't lose those. Now the fun part. In this carp there's two holes in there. And a hole in there. And here. And there. You want to spray. What's that? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Five holes. You want to get six right there. See how it's squirting out? It's coming out, so that's always a good sign. There you go. So it's clear now. You heard how at first it sounded like it was a blockage. So that's always a good sign. And then in here. All right, and then you want to get these two spots. Yeah, there we go. Got it. Okay, and I call this a power clean. Excuse me, a quick clean, because as you saw, I just squirted in here. If there, if this doesn't fix it, then I'll have to go in here with some needles or some mini steel bristles take one of those and knock whatever's blockage it has now we got to put this fancy carp together there we go all right first things first make sure you get your pin your seat pin and your butterfly together bam that it's like simple next you take your retaining pin this particular carb it goes through take your carb make sure you line up everything uh, let's see line it up like so oh this one it goes through it's not a place in so you have to play can you get it in the hole <laughs> uh, bam first try yeah i'm good at sticking stuff in holes <laughs> do the test turn it upside down bounce it up and down if if it bounces and don't fall apart you're good flip it back it's a pretty simple like lawnmowers have been low tech since what like the 50s Nothing's really changed but the body and deck and electric and all of that flim flam. But overall, Briggs and Stratton motors, they've been the same. They only have, what, two or three models. They've been the same for forever. All right. Put your nut back on. What I like to do is get it tight and then go a little oomph more like so. You take it. Bam. Now, let's put this thing back together. Uh, here we go. I'm actually low on carb cleaner, so I'm not going to clean it. It doesn't hurt anything as long as the connection, the mating surface is clean. You're good. All right, which way does Mickey Ficky go? 
goes this way. Okie dokie. All right. When you're putting it back together, make sure you put your throttle linkage back first. It's always easier because you can move the car. Ah. Bam. And then insert your two bolts. There's one. There we go. I had to get my ratchet together. All right. I like to get them hand tight and then finish them off. Ah, oh, there we go. That's it. Make sure you don't tighten them too much because you will strip them. If you're worried about them falling out, you know, backtracking out, put a little blue Loctite on them. But they tend to don't do that. There we go. All right, now when you're putting the rear part of your airbox back, make sure you get your recirculation valve or nozzle connected. That's where it recirculates some of the exhaust back into the airbox. All right, let's see. Line it up. Is it connected in there? Yep, okay. still connected always check make sure you're still connected because your recirculation tube will pop out and you won't even know it wondering why your mower is running like crap mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Normally I would start it before putting the box on in case I have to do a thorough full clean on the car. But I'm confident that I won't need to. But you never know until it's that fire up time. Also I didn't put the fuel line on. That's my fuck up. Totally spaced. I haven't been wrenching on mowers in a while, so, you know, um, I'm rusty as one would call it. <laughs> so let me do that first because it's easiest. And once I connect it, I'm going to do it how I normally do it, fire it up. See, and this is one of the reasons why I don't put this on until after I know it runs. <laughs> See, because now I'm double working. Yeah, right, get that out. Uh, get this do hickey. I'm gonna make sure it's at an angle that I can work with. Also, give me some space. All right. Fuel spewing out pretty nasty like that. Let you know that there's definitely not a blockage in your fuel line. All right. I'm gonna. Fire it up right now. Give it some time for the bowl to fill up. <sighs> Do a couple squirts. There we go. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna give the bowl a little more time.
little assistance. We're going to put the choke on low. <clears throat> dive so now I have to take the carb off and do a thorough cleaning of the car so it definitely needs a more thorough cleaning <clears throat> 